This product I'm holding is the X550 XRF analyzer. Um, it's one of the, it's our latest product and we just released it for uh, geochemistry market uh, about a week ago. So we're really excited about that for AGU. And then this here is uh, Libs analyzer. This is called the Z300. And I'll kind of jump in, talk a little bit about the differences between the two technologies. Uh, both have their strengths and, uh, you know, they're a little bit complementary in some ways. So um, I'll explain how that works. So first off with the Libs, this is the Z300 and the technology is laser induced breakdown spectroscopy or LIBS for short. And one of the um, best things about this technology is that you can actually see almost any element on the periodic table. So um, other handheld elemental analyzers like XRF have been limited by um, basically not being able to measure things uh, lighter than magnesium or lower atomic number than 12 on the periodic table. Um, the great thing about LIBS is that you can actually measure those elements uh, lighter than magnesium. So you can see lithium, you can see carbon, you can see hydrogen, sodium, um, you can see all that cool stuff along with the heavy metals as well. So um, the LIBS can do it all. Um, this uses a laser technique. So what's happening is when you pull the trigger, it's going to fire a laser. Um, that's got a really fine focal point. It's a short pulse uh, duration and it's a uh, high energy. So there's a lot of energy going into a small area over a very small period of time. And that's enough to actually heat the surface of the sample up to um, many thousands of degrees and create a plasma. What we do then is we capture that light coming from the plasma and we uh, chop it up into a spectrum. And um, what's cool about that light is that uh, different wavelengths of the light are characteristic of the different elements in the sample. So some elements will produce, um, say, one or two strong emission lines in your lib spectrum. Other elements will produce hundreds or thousands of emission lines. Um, so that's another kind of interesting difference between XRF. If, you, if you've ever looked at an XRF spectrum, typically you're only looking at um, one, maybe two peaks uh, per element. Whereas LIBS, you could be looking up at hundreds or thousands. Um, so this is a laser-based technique. So that means you don't have to worry at all about X-ray radiation. Um, you can go do cool things like actually test a sample uh, right in your hand like this and not worry about x-rays going through the sample and um, interacting with your hand because there are no x-rays. Um, you would never want to do that with an XRF, for example. Hold a sample like this and pull the trigger. Um, the other thing about uh, LIBS from an analytical point of view is that it's uh, highly in empirical uh, calibration based. So to get good quantitative results, you really want to have matrix match calibration um, to go along with it. So typically what people will do, you know, they'll start off um, maybe just shooting a sample with our Element Pro app, which will give you an idea of what elements are there. More of a qualitative thing, what, you know, what's there, what's not, as opposed to how much of an element is there. Um, from there, if they feel like they want to get good quantitative results out, then they'll uh, build their own calibration um, using matrix matched uh, known calibration standards. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, that's a, probably enough background on the libs. I'll just show you a quick um, demonstration of that Element Pro software I mentioned. Um, let's see if we can do this. So. First, I'm going to um, take a test, and then I'll, I'll switch to this other camera view once, I'm, once the test is complete, just so you can see what happens. So I'm just holding the sample in front, and then I'll pull the trigger, and you'll hear the, you'll hear the laser fire here. Hold on one sec. So that loud snapping is actually the laser hitting the sample, creating a plasma. 
And then what you're left with, if we switch cameras, I'll try to show you what's on the screen here. Yeah. There we go. All right, so this is actually a sample of uh, a mineral called spodumene, which is a high lithium mineral. Um, it also has a, a lot of aluminum and silicon. So that's why when we shoot it in this um, qualitative app um, called Element Pro, we see lithium, aluminum, silicon all at the top of the top of the list of elements detected. Uh, you also see these green numbers. Those are not uh, percentages. We call them relative abundances, but um, really they're just there to tell you, you know, how how much of this, how strong is this signal in the spectrum relative to the other elements in the spectrum. So it's not a percentage, but it can give you a rough idea if there's a lot or a little. Um, also notice that we we've, we've detected oxygen in this sample. So that's one of the cool things. The, one of the best things about LIBS, you can measure these, these light elements that you couldn't do before, like lithium, oxygen. Um, we also see a fair amount of calcium and, and sodium in this result. Um, and that's, even though that may not be a part of the mineral um, makeup, those are common uh, surface contaminants. And they're also super bright responders for LIBS. So we'll see calcium and sodium in almost anything. Um, just because they're such a strong responder and, and you find them in, um, in nature all over the place. So, um, so yeah, so that's a quick uh, look at what the Element Pro app does. And if you're ever wondering, you know, maybe you're surprised to see lithium in a sample. So you want to know, hey, can I actually see these lithium peaks in the spectrum? You can tap on lithium and then tap on the spectrum and we can jump in and actually visibly confirm, oh, there's the nice lithium 610 line at uh, 610 nanometers. And then here's the other strong lithium line up at 670. So it's a really easy way to get a quick qualitative um, analysis of your sample to understand what, what you're looking at, um, but not necessarily how much. So I'm going to run a quick experiment side by side with the XRF just to show you kind of the differences. So that was LIBS, laser-based optical emission technique that can see even very light elements like lithium, hydrogen, oxygen. This is XRF, and the lightest element this model can pick up is magnesium. Um, so this, the nice thing about XRF um, is that it's a little less, much less dependent on empirical calibration. So we ship this model with uh, a really nice factory built calibration that should do quite well um, on almost any uh, geological matrix. Um, so right out of the box you can actually get pretty good quantitative results, which then you could go in and, and optimize if you wanted to, but a lot of people find they don't have to. Um, so I'll just show you a quick, quick analysis um, of that same sample with XRF. So now I'll switch over to the screen here. Thanks, Rick. There we go. All right. So I'll try to hold this still while, while I talk about the results here. Um, so the first thing you'll notice is that instead of that kind of um, rough relative abundance number I, meant, I mentioned on the libs, we're actually seeing um, we're actually seeing percentages here. So that's because we've actually, this is a calibrated um, mode designed for geo geological samples, and it uses an algorithm called fundamental parameters, which um, allows you to get these nice uh, bulk chemistry and also trace level um, quantification. So first off, you see uh, al aluminum, silicon up around 15, 20%. Then you see some uh, trace level elements down below at down to ppm levels. And this was a really quick test, only uh, a few seconds. So I want to jump back up to this uh, LE number at the top of the screen. If you remember when we shot this spodumene sample with the LIBS, uh, one of the first elements that showed up was a major component of spodumene, lithium. And that is missing when we shoot it with XRF. So that's because lithium 
is a, a pretty light element. It's actually too light to detect with XRF. Um, so all those light elements that we cannot measure with XRF get en end up getting kind of grouped together in an estimated number called LE. That's that blue number at the top of the screen. So that's, um, that's representative light element. And it's our way of estimating all the light stuff that's too hard to measure directly um, with XRF. And the, the physics behind that is that those lighter elements, um, as you move to lower and lower atomic number or um, lighter um, atomic mass, the X-rays that come from those elements are generally less and less energetic. So they have a, um, when you reach something like magnesium or sodium even, uh, more and more of those X-rays are being absorbed by the air before they can reach your detector. Um, so that's why, that's why we're limited with XRF. We're kind of we're losing a lot of those X-rays coming from the sample to the air before we can measure them. Um, okay, so maybe we could switch back. Um, that was just a, a quick demonstration of you know one sample, um, you know a mineral that has a fair amount of light element lithium in it. Uh, what it looks like between the two different technologies.